Welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Tustin, California. I'm Kay Sylvester, I'm the rector here, and I bid you welcome in the name of the risen Christ. In Easter season, we are working out the implications of resurrection and how we become Easter people. We're delighted that you're with us. Let's worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O risen Christ, help us to love you by keeping your word. Help us to keep your word by loving you. Let all our words reflect your love. Let all our actions enact your grace. Fill us with your light, that the world may see in us a reflection of your kingdom. We pray in your holy name. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And now poem, Surprise, by Steve Garnis Holmes. Oh, Spirit, loosen my heart to stop being so surprised when you color outside my lines, when you bless those I curse, you embrace those I exclude, you empower those I put down. Starched with expectations, I am least able to catch your wind. Cemented by certainty, the pious are least likely to catch fire. Still, this is what you do best, to make the incombustible burst into glory. The good news of Jesus according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. 
No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Savior. In the name of God, the one who is love. Amen. It seems to be an ancient human trait to want to be someone's favorite. I'm dating myself, but I'm sure that some of you still remember the Smothers Brothers shtick, Mom always liked you best. Religion has not been immune to this. Multiple faiths claim to be God's favorite, often claiming a proprietary claim on God's love and grace. The earliest believers believed that the sign of God's approval was shown by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, And to their astonishment, they were shocked to see that the Spirit of God was showing up in the lives of the Gentiles. Surprise! God has no favorites. They were so confident that they were God's favorite that somehow they missed Jesus' inclusive message. It turned out that they heard what they wanted to hear. On his blog, Episcopal priest Rick Morley writes a reflection on this passage. In other words, they have no clue. They have no idea what God is doing, what God is capable of, or who God is able to reach. Instead of being open to the infinite possibilities of God, they are closed-minded, thinking that the only way to God is a way that looks like the way they came to God, as if God can't be reached by other roots, as if their understanding of God is the only right way, the only possible way. We can miss what God is doing in this world when we assume that God shares all of our human characteristics, because the human concept of God is often a manipulative device to control behavior. It goes like this. If you really loved me, you would fill in the blank. And so we might assume that God only loves us if our behavior matches what the church has told us our behavior should be. Love has many definitions, but I have only found one that is simple enough, strong enough, and inclusive enough to describe my understanding of the breadth of God's love. Love desires the highest good of the other. With that definition, there are no favorites. With that definition, we can love our enemies. With that definition of love, we can heal the world. The highest good for you turns out to be the highest good for me and the highest good for all. This affirms that each person is the handiwork of the divine imagination and makes up the integral totality of creation. To understand the love of God, we must separate love from emotion and behavior. Love is the stability of the holy, while emotions and behavior are subject to human instability. Love is unconditional while relationships are transactional. This is not contradictory. Jesus tells us the story that we have called the prodigal son. The young man was unwilling to make the transactional choices to remain in a relationship with his father and the family business. He walked away from love. Meanwhile, the father waited daily, not for an apology, but for his son's return to relationship. 
In this parable, we see that the love of God is driven by grace. Grace is the ability to make new choices and to return to relationship. The transactional nature of relationships breaks down when we only give to get, when we carefully keep score and then withhold when we feel slighted. Transactional relationships are transformed by the love that desires the highest good for the other. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us that if we choose to abide in God's love, we will keep his commandments. God's commandments, though, are not a specific list that when accomplished promises us a spiritual upgrade with God. When the rich young ruler came to Jesus with his Ten Commandments report card, he expected straight A's and a commendation, but he was sorely disappointed. Jesus pointed out that his obedience to the law served only his interest in being seen as a good person, but it excluded sharing his life with the world. Obeying the rules in order to set ourselves above those around us misses the point. A careful reading of the Ten Commandments reveals that these directives are guideposts for living in healthy relationships. To abide in God's love is to make our home in God, to live into the reality of God's world. That puts us into a relationship with all people and all creation. We set aside those things that hinder our being our whole self. We offer our lives on behalf of the world, and this is the formula for joy. God's love is not transactional. God's love does not waver. We may walk away, we may feel distance, but it is grace built into the nature of divine law that calls us back to the joy of abiding in God. It is grace that offers us fresh choices that can heal our relationships. It is the pull of God's gravitational love that will not let us go because we are all chosen. We are God's children. God's love is free, full, powerful, and gentle. Jesus invites us to experience that kind of love, and then we are invited to see all of our relationships transformed in the image of that love. A love which no one is anonymous or dispensable, no one is cast aside as irredeemable, and everyone exercises the kind of relaxed and joyful generosity that happens when nobody is keeping score in any arena. Amen. Now let us say together our affirmation of faith for Easter season. This is what we know to be true. Out of the chaos of the waters, God spoke light and life into the world, creating all things to contain God's glory and display God's love. This is what we know to be true. In the midst of the chaos and beauty of human life, Jesus was born. He lived a life completely full of God. He fed and healed taught and turned the world upside down. He spoke the truth of love to power and died with that truth intact. The risen Christ lives among us and within us that we might do even greater things. This is what we know to be true. The Holy Spirit, like breath, like wind, is the power of God moving over and through us. By the power of the Spirit, we proclaim God's kingdom and serve God's world. This is what we know. We are God's, because God loves us. Amen. The Prayers of the People We bring to God someone we have met or whom we remember. 
and for whom we want to pray. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring to God someone who is sick or hurting and needs our prayer. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring to God the troubled situations in our world. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring to God someone whom we find hard to forgive or trust. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring to God those who have died and those who grieve. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring to God our church and its ministers, lay and ordained. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. We bring ourselves to God that we might learn to practice resurrection. By the power of the risen Christ, give us new life. Alleluia. Fill us today with the joy of life renewed. Celebrate in us the glory of resurrection and send us forth from this day filled with hope and courage that we may share this joy with our sorrowing world. We pray because of Jesus, who shows us the way, even from the tomb to new life. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer our gifts for the building up of God's kingdom of love.
May streams of living water refresh and heal you. May still waters calm your soul and give you rest. May the waters of baptism call you to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life, be with you always. Amen. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.